Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get to medical school and other professional programs. Welcome back, future doctors. Today, we're diving into the intriguing world of sound as we prepare for the chem phys section of the MCAT. Let's start with the basics. Where's sound coming from? Imagine a drummer striking a drum. This creates a mechanical disturbance in the drum skin that causes molecules in the material to oscillate or vibrate. These oscillations of molecules will set off a chain reaction, leading to a wave of energy that propagates or travels through the air. These energy waves will then reach our ears, and then our brain will perceive it as sound. The key thing is that these are compression waves that are coming to our ears. Let's explore how it propagates. So sound can travel through all forms of matter, be it solid, liquids, or gases, but it cannot traverse a vacuum due to the absence of a medium, right? Vacuum means there's nothing there. The speed of sound differs based on the medium it's traveling through. It's quickest through solids because they're tightly packed, they're the densest of the mediums, and facilitate a rapid energy transfer. The speed decreases through liquids and is slowest in gases, where the molecules are most spaced apart. Next, let's demystify the concept of pitch. Simply put, pitch is how we perceive the frequency of a sound wave. Higher frequencies produce higher pitched sounds, like a bird's chirp whereas lower frequencies result in low pitch sounds, like the roar of a lion. And how do we represent frequency? Well, like scribbles here, very quick up and down movements, whereas a low frequency, low pitch, is gonna be really big wavelengths. So low frequency means big wavelength, and high frequency means short, tight wavelengths. Now onto intensity. We wanna understand both pitch and intensity to understand sound. Intensity describes the amount of power a wave carries per unit area. The formula for the intensity is I equals P over A, where I is the intensity or the power of the wave, P is the power of the wave, and A is the area over which the power is being applied. As distance from the source sound increases, intensity decreases due to the dispersion of sound waves over larger areas and energy lost due to attenuation. Attenuation is a fancy word referring to the gradual loss of wave energy due to frictional forces. Another incredibly high yield thing the MCAT is going to test when it comes to intensity are with decibels. These are used to measure sound intensity in a way that accounts for the logarithmic nature of human hearing. The equation to convert sound intensity into decibels is dB, or sometimes L, equals 10 times log base 10, 10 of I, the sound of the wave of interest, divided by I naught, which is the quietest sound a human can perceive, which happens to be one times 10 to the negative 12 watts per meter squared, which you're probably wondering, do I have to know that horrible number? It's low yield, so I actually would recommend memorizing that number. To use this equation, first measure the intensity of the sound wave you're interested in, the I, then divide that by the reference intensity, I naught. Then we're gonna take the log base 10 of that ratio, multiply that result by 10, and we have our sound level in decibels. And I want you to pay special attention that because the decimal scale is logarithmic, an increase of 10 decibels corresponds to a tenfold increase in sound intensity. One of my favorite effects on the MCAT, and one that is tested weirdly frequently in a lot of different sections. I've seen this tested in the bio biochem section, actually. So you definitely want to make sure you understand the Doppler effect. This phenomenon is describing the shift in the perceived frequency of a sound compared to its actual emitted frequency resulting from the relative motion between the source and the observer. An everyday example is a siren of an ambulance. As the ambulance approaches you, the siren sound sounds higher pitched due to increased frequency. Conversely, as it moves away from you, the siren sounds lower pitched because of the decrease of a decrease in frequency. Mathematically, this is expressed using the formula, frequency observed equals the frequency emitted times the velocity of the thing emitting the sound plus or minus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity of the sound plus or minus the velocity of the source. Another way that this is tested, and I know this isn't sound, but I think it's a very nice visual way to think about it. Let's say we've got somebody standing on Earth and there's this blue star over here. It's blue shifted, we say, because it's moving towards the person. So as it's moving towards them, the sound waves are getting compressed. They're shorter and shorter because it's blue shifted this we would say has a increase in frequency that's moving closer to that violet end of the spectrum. And it has a decrease in wavelength because anytime frequency goes up, wavelength is going to go down. Now, conversely, red shifted when it's moving away from the person, 
Now this is light moving away, but the exact same applies to sound. We are gonna have a longer wavelength. So this means that we are decreasing frequency and therefore have a longer wavelength. Finally, let's talk standing waves and strings and open pipes. For example, a plucked guitar string vibrates in a way that creates a wave that appears to stand still. The length of this vibrating part of the string is equal to the whole number multiple of half the wavelength of the wave. This relationship can be expressed by the following formula, where our L equals N times lambda over two. In contrast, pipes that are closed at one end, like an organ pipe, support standing waves where the length of the pipe is equal to an odd number of quarter wavelengths. We express this by saying the length equals n times lambda over 4, and n can only be an odd number, 1, 3, 5, 7, yada, yada, yada. Finally, for real this time, we come to ultrasound. This medical technology uses high-frequency sound waves beyond human hearing to visualize the interior of the body. Regular ultrasound scans depict the relative densities of different tissues. Doppler ultrasounds, however, take this a step further. By using the Doppler effect, it can measure the flow of blood within the body, providing valuable insights into vascular health. So there you have it. Comprehensive dive into the science of sound. Remember, understanding these concepts is not just about memorizing definitions. That's why I've made another video that I recommend you watch where we're going to do some practice problems to make sure you absolutely understand this before taking your exam. Thank you so much for watching our video on sound, and I'll see you next time.